I made a mistake and I said that the Giants were the only team to lose three series in a row. And that's not true. In 1909, the Tigers accomplished that feat, losing 7 8 9. But no other team has done it since, and it's been 110 years. So cut me a little slack, huh? Anyways, after seven years of last place seasons, including the worst season in modern baseball history, Ben Scheib died in 1922, probably from a broken heart. I mean, the team he invested in, all his money, with all his friends, became a joke. The Athletics, looking to mend broken hearts and climb out of the hole, picked up um, Al- Aluzis Szymanski or uh, Alice Szymanskiewicz. Uh, let's just call him Al Simmons. Uh, by 1925, Bucketfoot led the American League with 253 hits and 392 total bases, putting up a 387 batting average. Astonishing. Amazing. I'm not sure why they called him Bucketfoot, but I can just imagine, like, the guys in the dugout probably talked a lot of smack to each other after losing and struggling for so long you know like oh hey nice hit bucket foot yeah I'm sure if I had a bucket for a foot I'd get a lot of hits too alright bucket foot and it just stuck you know So Al Simmons bucket foot or because he would like pull the ball like you had a bucket Whatever. I thought it was because he had big feet. (laughs) Anyways, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a thing in the MLB where they just have nicknames that don't necessarily make sense. But, uh, yeah, Al Simmons. Amazing. And he would go on to become the fastest player to reach the mark of 2,000 hits in just 1,393 games. <sighs> the next year, 1925, Jimmy Fox, Mickey Cochran, and Lefty Grove would join the White Elephants. Jimmy Fox was a legendary power hitter. Jimmy Fox, in 20 years of playing, would hit over 500 home runs, including more than 30 home runs per year for 12 consecutive seasons and 100 runs per year for 13 straight, winning the Triple Crown of Baseball. Mickey Cochran was a multi-sport athlete in Boston University, playing football, basketball, and baseball, but he decided to play baseball because at the time, Baseball was much more popular and a legitimate sport. And he became one of the greatest catchers to ever play, obtaining a career batting average of 320, which stands today as the highest batting average for any catcher. Lefty Grove was an amazingly talented pitcher, only posting one losing season through 17 which was his rookie year. Lefty led the American League in strikeouts seven years in a row, the lowest ERA nine times, pitcher's triple crown twice, and most wins in four separate years. But as good as this team was, they would only finish second to the Yankees for a while. Yankees won the pennant three years in a row, 1926, 27, and 28. 
the World Series twice. 1929 and 1930, Athletics won the World Series. The White Elephants also won the pennant in 1931, but they lost the World Series to the Cardinals. These teams, though, the 26-7-8 Yankees and the 29-30-31 Athletics were very similar in their success. Uh, actually, if you put them together, the uh, runs for and the runs against and compare them with the three years together, it adds up in a difference of only one run. It's just amazingly similar. And then, just like that, the Great Depression. <sighs> Smack the A's right back into the hole they just climbed out of. Sadly, with lower attendance, lower revenue. They were forced to get rid of the players that had made them a World Series champion team once again. In 1932, Al Simmons went to the White Sox. The next year, Lefty went to the Red Sox and Cochran went to the Tigers. 34 and 35 were terrible. And at 36... Ben Scheib's sons, who just inherited the presidency of the team, both passed away, one after another. Now, the presidency was left with Connie Mack. And he became the owner, the president, and the manager of the club. But between 34 and 55, the team would never finish above fourth place, including 11 last place seasons. In 1938, the Phillies moved into Shy Park as tenants, but still, they didn't have enough revenue to put together a winning team. By the mid-40s, Connie Mack was suffering from dementia, almost as bad as Joe Biden is today. He was calling for players that weren't even on the team anymore and falling asleep in the dugout. He never considered firing himself as he was the owner, manager, and president of the team. But he did give shares to his three sons, who would inherit the team. In 1951, Mickey Crockerin came back and would take over as a manager. And Connie finally hung up the keys. But his record of 50 years as the manager... 7,755 games. The most wins and the most losses of any manager ever. It was just untouchable. Especially with the rules they have in baseball today. I mean, it's very rare to see a player manager. The last one, in fact, was Pete Rose. And it's even less to see an owner manager also <laughs> you know if you fall asleep during the game in the dugout you, the president is probably going to have you replaced by the time you wake up right so it's not going to happen it's never you're not, you're not going to see an 87 year old dude going through dementia in the dugout as a manager it's not going to happen but, yeah, I mean, what an amazing guy. I mean, really, top G. During his reign, winning nine pennants, five World Series titles. There's 30 teams in Major League Baseball, and 25 of them don't have five World Series titles? Like, that's just immaculate. But in 1954, Connie Mack's sons, Earl, Roy, and Connie Jr., decided to sell the team to Arnold Johnson. And that's part two of the Philadelphia Athletics.